in this session of Look at the Book on 1 Peter 3, 21 and 22, we're going to ask the question, how baptism saves you? Because for many, in some traditions, that's a very startling statement. And the question is going to be answered by attending very carefully to the immediate qualifying context that Peter gives in the statements, not as a removal of dirt from the body, and so on. So let's read it. Baptism, which corresponds to this, we'll look at that, namely the rescue from the flood back in the days of Noah, Baptism, which corresponds to this rescue through the flood, now saves you, like God saved Noah and his family, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience or from a good conscience, different translations, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels and authorities and powers having been subjected to him. Father, you are very great, and your Son has been brought to your right hand in the lordship of the universe over all demonic power and over death, and I pray that we would see that here in such clear and beautiful and powerful light that our confidence in you and our boldness for you in this world would be increased. I ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Baptism, which corresponds to this. He had just said that uh, in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through the water, So a few people in a world of unrighteousness were rescued by God and brought safely through water. And that triggers in Peter's mind that this is a type, we might call it, or a foreshadowing or a preview or a pointer to baptism. And he says baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you. Now, what does that mean, that baptism saves you? And if you isolated that away from its context, you could go into all kinds of heretical notions and say, well, it's the water that saves, or it's the priestly application of the water. That's the sacramental effectiveness of grace, which takes away sin, regardless of whether there's faith or not, or anything like that. You could go in those directions, but look, baptism saves you. And then he, as if listening in on our doubts and conversations, he says, not not as a removal of dirt from the body. Now, he could have followed that by, but as a removal of sin from the soul. So it sounds like, well, maybe he's, he's saying it is the water and the baptism which saves you effectively, but it, the effect of the water going over your body is not to take away the dirt of the body. It's to take away the sin of the soul, and that's not what he says. He, he doesn't go in that direction. He says, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, or some translations say as a response to God from a good conscience. Either, in either case, what's being focused on here is not how the water is effective, but rather what the baptism th- through water signifies. And what it signifies is an act of the heart, an appeal to God or a response to God. So, so the, the, the baptismal act is expressing an act of the soul that is praying. It's looking to God for God to cleanse the conscience or from a good conscience for God to save the soul in some other 
uh, expression, that is, through the forgiveness of sins, or it could have gone in any one of, of several directions for how God is going to do it. All that he's focusing on here is that the act of baptism is not being thought of as water doing its work, but rather water representing an act of faith from the soul that does its work. In other words, the the instrument of salvation is not the water, not the water, but we could say faith, that is the, the, the response of the soul expressing itself in a prayer to or a response to God. And then he clarifies further how the baptism saves. He says it's through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I think the point there is that he has in mind that baptism, I'm looking at Romans 6, 4, the picture of baptism as you go into the water is we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. So, so the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the act by which we are saved from the death which baptism signifies. So when he says here, baptism by being an appeal to God or an act of faith of the soul that rests in God's cleansing power, baptism saves us through the resurrection. He means in this act, we are united to Christ so that his resurrection saves us from death. It's not the waters of Noah that are threatening us. It's death that is threatening us. And therefore, it's through the resurrection that we come through death into newness of life and into resurrection life. And and if that were not enough, that the enemy of death has been overcome, he continues to say, this Christ who was raised from the dead, this Christ has gone into heaven in his resurrection body, and is at the right hand of God, meaning the sovereign of the universe, with angels and authorities and powers having been subjected to him. Meaning, you're not just saved from death, but you're saved now from all the demonic powers of the universe. So if you picture the empty tomb here, looking back, death is overcome, and looking forward, these demons are overcome. When he died and rose, death was conquered, demons were conquered. So let's just go back and review. He just said in 320 that back in Noah's day, a few people, that is eight, were brought safely through water. It looked like the whole world was arrayed against just a few Christians or a few believers back in that day. And how helpless the family of Noah must have felt. And here are these Christians in the Roman Empire feeling that all of the empire seems so wicked and they seem so small and death is threatening and, and all the demonic powers are threatening And Peter wants them to say, look, baptism, similar to Noah being rescued, is the means by which you are rescued insofar as that baptism is an appeal to me, either from or for a good conscience. And by that appeal, by that act of faith, I will come and I will, in my resurrection, save you from death and in my exaltation into heaven at the right hand of God, save you from all the demonic powers. You need not fear that you are such a a small and seemingly insignificant group. You are mine, and I will save you. 